Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Music with Todd Ledbetter. Super glad you're here. And uh, we got a new band to the channel coming up today. This was a recommendation from a uh, a listener that I know in person. And I, it's a former co-worker. And he is uh, very, very fond of uh, Sunset Rubdown. And I believe they are a Canadian band. And we're going to take a look at one of their uh, songs, The Mending of the Gown, which was from the Random Spirit Lover album, which he said was his uh, kind of favorite album of theirs, for sure. Um, he even wrote it down for me, uh, thankfully. Um, anyways, so we're going to look at, uh, oh, that was 2007. It's 12 songs, 58 minutes, 12 seconds. So this is not a band I'm familiar with. Uh, never heard of them before. I read a little bit about them. Uh, and some of their, you know, where some of these people come from, these other bands that I guess were known in Canada and maybe elsewhere as well, I'm, I'm sure. But um, nobody I'd ever heard of before. But this is Sunset Rubdown. And uh, we're going to take a listen to this Mending of the Sun. Might as well, right? It's the first time.
Okay. <laughs> that um, took me a minute to focus on it because I was just distracted at first. Um, it was pretty lo-fi. I don't know if that's the correct term. Uh, as, you know, I don't know if that's a style of music. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying lo-fi in its production. Uh, I'm sure uh, largely on purpose as a stylist, uh, stylistic uh, decision, um, most, most likely. But um, let me just start with uh, well, then then I started to sort of find some things to focus on and listen to uh, once I kind of got used to the sort of the the mix, you know, the the. Well, I'm not going to describe how I felt the mix was. It was just kind of lo fi. Let's just put it in a general term and then move on to some positive things, because I'm not saying that I don't like that. Um, and I don't know if all their music's like that. I would hope not for my sake, for their sake, whatever. Anybody else that likes them, it's fine. Um, I like that, but you know, uh, that style of, of, uh, recording or just that technique of lo-fi, but in small doses and a lot of times intertwined into other, uh, songs as a you know, transition or as a piece or something, you know, and then coming out of it. But, um, the piano I think was really the star of this song, even though I, I, I'm not I, I, I'm not particularly like all excited about that style of you know like that. Um, that was one of the hard things for me to get over at first. Okay, and then um, once I realized how dominant the piano was going to be, and I kind of lost interest in the drums real early. Um, and there was really no bass. There was guitar was just a little too screechy for me. <laughs> okay. So I did say, let's start with the positive, didn't I? The piano. So what I liked about the piano, I think, which really saves the song for me, um, it to the point where I liked it and I felt, uh, the energy of the song and, and just, uh, an appreciation for the art that went into it, especially when the piano started playing um, a lot of really cool chords, really changed it up. It wasn't just that basic, you know, sort of, you know, pounding on the piano. And it, it, he started doing some very creative, very interesting chord changes and progressions. And he did that a couple of times, uh, several times, more than a couple. Um, and I think, and I really appreciated that. That really caught my attention and made me feel like, okay, this is something that I need to delve into a little further because there's some sophistication here. You know, I, it's hard one song, you know, you know, one song, like I said, I don't know if all their songs sound like this or if this is just a style for this one particular one. So I don't know. Uh, but the piano was super creative in its chord structures. And the other really cool thing that I think um, sort of flipped the switch for me uh, to the on position was that bridge sort of sort of the first time we kind of came out of the uh, sort of, you know, main theme of the song, the bouncy, uh, you know, give me a bouncy C uh, part. I guess you got to be old to get, understand that reference. If you do, let me know <laughs> down in the comments. If you, if you, that was my impression of an impressionist. Um, that part was so cool. I really liked the vibe and the change in the whole uh, sense of that song during that bridge part a lot. And I thought it was uh, sort of, uh, in my mind, it was like the, the key was turned and I was like, okay, that along with the awesome keyboard chords and progressions that was going on, uh, keeps me interested for another, um, another chance, you know, uh, I want to hear more because I'm so many times shocked and surprised by, uh, bands that I have, uh, tr trouble with 
you know, okay, let's just say, I, let's just say I rate this song a B. Okay. That's pretty good. I mean, Jesus, better than I did in school, you know? <laughs> so I'd be, I'm happy, a B. I'm, uh, but I like to listen to A's and, and high, A's and, you know, cl- just icon- iconic songs that come from bands I've never heard of, you know, and just iconic albums. Uh, this may be one. And I have this like little, little twinge in my heart because I'm so unfamiliar with this band that especially, especially you Canadians, because you're going to be way more familiar with this band and you're going to let me know all the special things that they mean to you. And that's awesome. I want that. I want to know about that because that really gets my fire uh, hot when, to check out a band in more depth. When I hear a lot of you guys saying, you know, well, I'm not putting them down, but I'm just being, I'm giving a reaction and sort of a review, I guess. I know that you guys probably, and and I'm the same way. I have bands that are not very well known to many of my friends, even, you know, that there's just some bands that I just love still to this day that I grew up with that not, not many people really know about, but I'm not saying that they're not famous or known, but uh, it was interesting. I, I liked it once I got it, got into it a little bit. It took me a minute, honestly, um, just to find the you know where what i'm listening to and to figure it out and and i had to dismiss a couple things like bass i couldn't really hear bass and i think that's because just the way it was mixed just i think there was bass there but i really couldn't hear it and so uh and i'm you know i'm such a bass guy you know i am i'm all about the bass and uh and the drums got, so the drums got dismissed pretty, pretty quickly. Uh, so then my, that left my last focus on piano, vocals, and guitar. I haven't really said anything about the vocals. Um, interesting, you know, approach to a pretty jumpy, interesting song. Um, so really, I really wouldn't want to, uh, you know, I think this needs to be like a, a couple part session, you know, for me to make a, an accurate, uh, assessment of the band. Cause that's the thing. It's like, I, I'm a band guy. So once I get invested into a band, I am invested, you know, but to cough up the money to put it in that investment, <laughs> it takes a little bit for me. So this was a little bit of an investment into uh, a band I never heard of. And I'm excited to hear about what you guys think of them and uh, what song would be best for me to hear as a second song as part of the introduction to uh, Sunset Rubdown. So let me know in the comments and let me know what songs uh, you think are are best for next. And uh, I guess uh, we'll see you guys down in the comments and then we'll see you in the next video. I guess that's about it, right? You know where to... uh, request songs over on Ko-Fi and Patreon and all that stuff. You can do that or look down in the description for whatever you need to know. And uh, we'll see you in the next video. You guys have a great day, whatever's left of it. Bye-bye.